What's going on everybody, Mitch here and welcome back to another video and as you saw in the title, today we're doing another walkthrough tutorial video. Now if you watched my last walkthrough tutorial video, the one on the sapper, this one is going to seem very familiar, but the Panzer Shrek and the Bazooka on the Allied side are a lot more effective than the sapper, but they're only available in the later campaign. So let's go ahead and begin and talk about the equipment you have when using the Panzer Shrek and there's really only two things you need to worry about while operating with the Panzer Shrek equipment is your Panzer Shrek itself for anti-tank and anti-vehicle and the other one is your handgun, the Luger. Now the best way to think about using the pistol and especially the German pistol because it is fairly decent, consider it more self-defense than anything else but if you have to and if you're in close enough range you can support friendlies around you and take out an enemy if you catch them unsuspected. It looks like I saw a leg. I think you might have enemy infantry chasing them. Let's help him out. We only have a pistol. Yeah. Let's let him know he's clear. Now even though you can get the best of enemy infantry, it's still best to avoid them in most situations. They will often still get the best of you when all you have is a pistol. But now that we covered how to operate the Luger and best practices for the pistol, let's talk about your main weapon, the Panzer Shrek. A lot of the ideas we talked about for the Sapper video apply for the Panzer Shrek as well. You're going to be mostly stealthing your way through the countryside looking and listening for signs of enemy tanks and equipment. Now you may be asking yourself if the Panzer Shrek and the Sapper are so close in playstyle, why would I want to pick the Panzer Shrek over the Sapper? Well there's two main reasons. Number one, the Panzer Shrek is a projectile that is fired and it can be fired from a larger distance than what you need for the sapper where you have to get right up on top of the enemy vehicle you're trying to destroy and then place your charge on it. Panzer Strike you don't have to do that. You could be a good little distance away, fire it at the vehicle possibly from cover and not reveal yourself as much as you would as a sapper. The second thing is you have more killing potential with the Panzer Shrek. With the Sapper, you get two Heat Satchels and two HE Satchels. The Heat Satchels are the only ones that are effective at killing vehicles. So that's only two possible vehicles you can kill if you place your charges right the first time and kill a vehicle with each satchel. With the Panzer Shrek, you get four rockets. That's four potential kills. But you definitely have to be patient with your playstyle. The Panzer Shrek and the Sapper both are not for the run and gun players. Yeah, there's definitely gunfire up ahead there. And we saw the uh, the dust fly off from the shot right ahead. So we are going the right direction. Let's keep heading this way. Staying mindful that there's still enemy tank noises coming from our left, so... We can't move to previously around here. Ooh. Looks like somebody just blew up. I don't know if that was friendly or enemy. There's a tank right ahead of us. That is a Renault Char B1 and also something else. A Stuart maybe? So two really good targets for us right here. Let's go ahead and get our stamina back because we're going to have to charge these guys and act fast. There's also enemy infantry that we need to be mindful of. Oh. They have a mobile spawn right there. And an anti-aircraft gun. Okay, so the steward's moving. Still infantry around. And there's also still anti-aircraft guns around. So we have to be careful. Now something unique with the Panzer Shrek and the bazookas and everything like that is you have to be at least at a crouch and you have to be stopped to start reloading it. You start off with your Panzer Shrek or Bazooka unloaded and you cannot sprint and you cannot unload the Panzer Shrek or Bazooka. So you gotta, you know, be ready to fire when you load this. Now I already know where to hit this, but it's the same location as you would hit it with the Sapper charge. 
which I'll show you on screen now, and I'll link it in the description down below. So let's go ahead and hit this before he moves. Even though I already called out what tank type this is, if you happen to run across a tank and not know what it is, luckily the sapper guide that I use and that I'm linking down below in the description, it displays the silhouettes of all the tanks. And luckily for you, if you're on the Axis side using the Panzer Shrek, the allied tanks are very easy to identify using their silhouettes. They're all pretty unique. The allies aren't so lucky because the Axis tanks are so similar and have just very minor differences. Like if you look at the Panzer III, H and F, the only real difference is the turret one has the extension and the other one does not. Now looking at the sapper guide that I use, and like I said, the sapper guide works just fine for the Panzer Shrek because it has the same destructive force as an heat satchel. It'll do just as much damage, if not more, uh, so you can hit the same points. Now looking at this, we can tell that we are up against a Char B1. And looking at the drawing, we see we want to aim towards the rear of the tank on either side of it in this nice little square patch. So let's go ahead and do that now. Moves on us or does something crazy. There we go, we hit it. He's on fire. Perfect. Game over for him. Let's get our pistol out. And let's back the hell off and get back in cover. Because of things like that. So, he just revealed himself. He didn't kill us. Got very damn close. We are injured. We can't sprint anymore. But we need to know where he is now. Now, as you saw, we did get the kill on the French Renault tank. But also, that I made a mistake there, I got a little too careless as I ran away. After you fire your rocket and destroy a tank, you do draw attention to yourself and your area, and tanks and infantry will look your way. And that is the time where you need to be most careful. I wasn't in this circumstance and I got very lucky that I wasn't killed. Although I was injured and I am no longer able to sprint, which will affect the mission going forward. Now at this point in the video, we're able to sneak around and spot the tank that originally shot us. But now watch how I stalk and set up the kill on this tank. And keep in mind that my character is wounded and can no longer sprint. Now as we go along here and continue to kill tanks, I'll continue to show the sapper guide and where I'm aiming on these tanks. But a quick note for Axis players and a tip. If you're facing the American made tank, so the Stuart, the Shermans, and the M10 Wolverine, you can aim at the back three-fourths of the tank on the side armor and kill just about every single American tank every time.
Now a quick note here, as you saw I did reload my Panzer Strike. This was a mistake. I got happy on the reload button and I reloaded. Now it doesn't hurt me as much as it normally would because I couldn't already sprint, which reloading the Panzer Strike prevents you from doing. But what will hurt me is I can no longer access my Luger without firing off this round first and I cannot access my binoculars, which will make it extremely hard to spot armor unless they help me out and give away their position. In this part of the video I don't say anything, but I'm stalking the same tanks that were previously highlighted. And I hope this illustrates how patient you have to be when using the Panzer Shrek. As you can see here, I patiently wait for the opportune moment to strike. Well there you go guys, 4 kills with 4 rockets, I hope you guys found this video interesting, I did die trying to return back to base, but we already did as much destruction as we could possibly do, we got 5 total kills, so 4 tanks and 1 infantryman, 
but I hope you guys found this video interesting. I hope you learned something about the Panzer Shrek and how to use it in World War II Online. And I hope some of you found this video entertaining. But until next time, guys, have a great one and later.